Hey guys, welcome back to the show floor of KubeCon CloudNativeCon 22 North America from Detroit, Michigan. Lisa Martin here with John Furrier. This is day one, John, of the Cube's coverage, the Cube's coverage, not the Cube's coverage, Cube coverage. the Cube's coverage of KubeCon. Try saying that five times fast. Day one, we have three wall-to-wall -wall days. You know, we've been talking about Kubernetes containers, adoption, cloud adoption, app modernization all morning. We can't talk about those things without addressing security. Yeah, this segment we're going to hear container and Kubernetes security for modern applications because the enterprise are moving there and this segment with Red Hat is going to be important because they are the leader in the enterprise when it comes to open source and Linux. So this is going to be a very fun segment. Very fun segment. Two guests from Red Hat join us. Please welcome Doran Caspin, Senior Principal Product Manager at Red Hat. Michael Foster joins us as well, Principal Product Marketing Manager and Stackrock's Community Lead at Red Hat. Guys, great to have you on the program. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So Michael, Stackrock's acquisition, has been about a year, you got some news. Yeah, 18 Unpack months. Unpack that for it's us. It's been 18 months, yeah. So Stackrock's in 2017, originally we shifted to be the Kubernetes native security platform. That was our goal, that was our vision. Red Hat obviously saw uh, a lot of um, powerful, let's say mission statement in that, and they bought us in 2021. Uh, Pre-acquisition, we were looking to create a cloud service. Originally we ran on Kubernetes platforms, we had an operator and things like that. Now we are looking to basically bring customers in into our service preview for ACS as a cloud service. So it's very the exciting. security conversation is top notch right now. Yeah. It's an all time high, you can't, can't go with anywhere without talking about security and specifically in the code. We were talking before we came on camera, the software supply chain is real, it's not just about verification. Where do you guys see the challenges right now? Containers having, even scanning them is not good enough. First of all, you got to scan them, and that may not be good enough. Where's the security challenges and where's the opportunity? I think a little bit of it is a new way of thinking. The speed of security is actually, does make you secure. We want to keep our images up and fresh and updated, and we also want to make sure that we're keeping the open source and the different images that we're, uh, that we're bringing in secure. Uh, Doran, I know you have some things to say about that too. He's been yeah. working tirelessly on the cloud service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that one thing that you, you, you need to trust your, your sources, right? You, even if in the, in the open source world, you don't want to copy paste libraries from the, from the web. And even if you, most of our customers using third party vendors and getting images from different locations, we need, we need to trust our sources and we have a really good, even if you have really good uh, scanning solution, you, can, you, you, always, you not always can trust it. Mm -hmm. You need to have a, a good solution and for that. And you guys are having news, you're announcing the Red Hat Advanced Cluster Security Cloud Service. Yes. What is that? So we take, we took Stackworks and we take the, we took the opportunity to make it as a cloud services. So customer can, Consume, us, consume the product as a cloud services, as a SaaS offering, mm -hmm. and we can buy, a customer can buy it through, through Amazon Marketplace and in the future uh, Azure Marketplace. Mm -hmm. So customer can use it uh, for, for the AKS and EK, EKS and AKS and also of course OpenShift. Mm -hmm. So we are not specifically for, for OpenShift, we're not just OpenShift, we also provide support for EKS and AKS, so uh, we provide the capability to, to secure the whole cloud faster. We know customers are not only OpenShift or not only EKS, they have both. They have free, they have free cloud or full cloud, so they have Google so, Cloud. So it's not just OpenShift, it's Kubernetes environments yeah. all together. All together, yeah. Meeting we, customers where they are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we focus on, we are not trying to boil the ocean or solve the whole cloud security posture. We try to solve the Kubernetes security posture. Yeah. It's very unique and very need unique so, uh, solution for that. Yep. It's not just uh, added value for the, another uh, cloud security po uh, uh, solution. We think it's something special for Kubernetes. Yeah. And this is what Red Hat is aiming to, mm -hmm. to yeah. solve this issue. And the ACS platform really doesn't change at all. It's just how they're consuming it. It's a lot quicker in the cloud time to value is right there. As soon as you start up a Kubernetes cluster, you can get started with ACS Cloud Service and get going really quickly. I'm going to ask you guys a very simple question, but I heard it at the, in the bar in the lobby last night, practitioners talking, and they were excited about the Red Hat opportunity. They actually asked a question, where do I go and get uh, some free Red Hat to test some Kubernetes out and run Helm or whatever? They want to play around. Mm -hmm. And do you guys have a program for someone to get started for free? Yeah, so the cloud service, uh, 
specifically, uh, we're going to service preview, so if people sign up, they'll be able to test it out and uh, give us feedback, that's that what we're the looking sandbox, for. Is that or is that going to be in the cloud? Or? Uh, they can run it in their own environments, so they can sign up. Free. Uh, free, yeah, free. For the service preview. All we're asking for is for customer feedback, and I know it's, it's actually getting busy there, it's starting in December, so um, the quicker people yeah. are, the better. So my friend at the lobby I was talking to, I told you it was free, <laughs> I gave you the sandbox, but check out your cloud too. Okay, we'll get and that out of the And you also have the open source version, so you can download it and use yes. it, so. Yeah, people want to know how to get involved. I'm getting a lot more folks coming to Red Hat from the open source side that, are, that want to get their, their feet wet. That's been a lot of people are rarely interested. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a real testament to the product leadership. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So what are the key challenges that you have on your roadmap right now? You got the products out there. What's the current state? Can you scope the, the adoption? Can you share where we're at, what people are doing specifically, and, and the real challenges? I think one of the biggest challenges is talking with customers with a slightly, I don't want to say outdated, but an older approach to security. Uh, you hear things like malware pop up, and it's like, well, really what we should be doing is keeping things uh, into low and medium vulnerabilities, looking at the configuration, managing risk accordingly. Uh, having disparate security tools or you know, different teams doing various things, it's really hard to get a security picture of what's going on in the cluster. Mm -hmm. That's some of the biggest challenges that we're focusing, uh, that we talk with customers about. And in terms of, of resolving those challenges, you know, we you mentioned malware, we talk about ransomware, it's a household word these days, it's no longer, are we going to get hit, it's when, it's what's the severity, it's how often. Yeah. How are, are you guys helping customers to dial down some of the risk that's inherent and only growing these days? Mm -hmm. Yeah, risk, it's, uh, it's a tough word to, <laughs> to, to generalize, but our whole goal is to give you as much security information in a way that's consumable so that you can evaluate your risk, set policies, and then enforce them uh, early on the cluster, or early on in the uh, development so pipeline, yeah. so that your developers uh, get the security information they need, hopefully asynchronously, that's the best way to do it, it's nice and quick. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Doron, do you want to add to that? Yeah, so I think, yeah, we know that uh, ransomware, again, it's a big word for everyone, and we understand the, the, the area of of the boundaries, where we want to, what we want to protect, and we think it's about policies and where we enforce it. Mm -hmm. So, and if you can enforce it on, on, we know that as as we discussed before, that you can scan the image, but you never know what is in it until you ra really run it. So, we we one of the things that we, we provide is runtime sc uh, scanning. So you can scan and you can have policy in runtime. So enforce things in, in runtime. But even you, if you you, you know, one image got in the way and get to your, your uh, cluster and get can run on somewhere. We can stop it in the, in in runtime. Yeah, and even with the runtime enforcement, the biggest thing we have to educate customers on is that that's the last ditch effort, yeah. right? We want to get these security controls as early as possible. That's where the value is going to be. So we don't want to be blocking things from getting to staging six weeks yeah. after the developers have been working on a project. I want to get your guys' thoughts on developer productivity. I uh, had Docker CEO on earlier, and since then I had a couple of people messaging me. You know, love the vision of Docker, but Docker Hub has kind of had some legacy, and it might not, it doesn't have any kind of adoption that, that some people think it does. Are people moving, because developers want to have these, their own places. There's no one place, or maybe there is, or how do you guys see the, the movement of, say, Docker Hub to just using containers, I don't need to be Docker Hub. What's the vis-a-vis? Uh, I mean, working with open source, with Red Hat, uh, you have to meet the developers where they are. If your tool isn't cutting it for developers, they're going to find a new tool. Um, and really, they're the engine, the growth engine of a lot of these technologies. So, uh, again, if, if Doc, I don't want to speak about Docker or what they're doing specifically, but um, I know that they pretty much kicked off the container revolution and got this whole thing started. A lot of people so. are using your environment too. We're hearing a lot yeah. of uptake on the Red Hat side too. So it's, it's open source, it all sorts itself out in the end, like you said. But mm -hmm. You guys are getting a lot of traction there. Yeah. Can you share what's happening there? I think one of the biggest things yeah, from a developer experience that I've seen is the universal base image that people are using. I can speak from a security standpoint. It's, it's awesome that you have a base image where you can make one change or one issue and it can impact a lot of different applications. That's one of the uh, big benefits that I see in, in adoption. What I'm are some of the business, I'm curious about some of the business outcomes. Are you talking about a faster time to value, obviously yeah. being able to get security shifted left and from a, from a a control perspective, but what are some of the, if I'm a business, if I'm you know, a telco or a healthcare organization or a financial organization, what are some of the top line benefits that this can bubble up to impact? I, I mean, yeah. for me, with uh, those two providers, compliance is a massive one. Um, 
and just having uh, just an overall look at what's going on in your clusters and your environments so that when audit time comes, you're prepared, you can get through that extremely quickly. And then as well, when something inevitably does happen, you can get a good image of all of, like let's say a log for shell happens, you know exactly what clusters are affected, the triage time is a lot quicker, developers can get back to developing, um, and then yeah, you can get through it. Uh, well, one thing that we see that customers uh, compliance is huge, right? Yes. And we don't want to, the, the old way was that, okay, I will provision a cluster and I will do scans and find things that I need to do for PCI DSS, for example. Today the customer want to provision in advance a PCI DSS cluster. So you need to do the compliance before you provision the, exactly. the cluster and make all the configuration already baked for PCI DSS or HIPAA compliance or, or FedRAMP. And this is where we try to use our compliance. We have tools for compliance today on, on OpenShift and other clusters, on other di distributions that you can do this in advance before you even uh, provision the cluster. And we also have tools to, to enforce it after that, after you provision, but you have to do it again before and after to, to make it more yeah. feasible. Advanced cluster management and the compliance operator really help with that. That's why OpenShift Platform Plus as a bundle is so popular. Just being able to know that when a cluster gets provisioned, it's going to be in compliance with whatever the healthcare provider is using. And then you can automatically have ACS as well pop up so you know exactly what applications are running, you know it's in compliance. I mean, that's the speed. You know, you mentioned the word operator. I get it's a triggering word now for me because <laughs> like, you know, operator roles changing significantly on this next we see this next wave coming because of the automation. They're operating, but they're also devs too. They're developing and composing. It's almost like a dashboard, Lego blocks. The operator's not just, you know, manually racking and stacking like the old days, I'm oversimplifying it, but mm -hmm. the new operators running stuff, they got observability, they got coding, they're servicing policy. There's a lot going on, there's a lot of knobs. Is it going to get simpler? What do you, how do you guys see the org structures changing to fill the gap on what should be a very simple, turn some knobs, you know, operate at scale? Well, when Stackrox originally got acquired, <laughs> one of the first things we did was put uh, ACS into an operator, and it actually made the application lifecycle so much easier. It was very easy in the console to go and say, hey, yeah, I want ACS in my cluster, click it. Uh, it would get provisioned, new clusters would get provisioned automatically, so underneath it might get more complicated, but in terms of the application lifecycle, operators make things so much easier. And of course, I saw, I was lucky enough with Lisa to see Project Wisdom in and, and, uh, Ansible Fest, you're going to say, hey, hey, Red Hat, spin up the clusters. It just uh, magically will be voice activated. Yeah. Yeah. Starting to see AI come in. So again, opera operations, operator. It's got a dev vibe and an SRE vibe, but it's not that direct. Well, something's happening there. We're trying to put yeah. our finger on it. What do you guys think's happening? What's the real, what's the action? What's transfer? What's transforming? That's a good question. I think, in general, things just move to the developers all the time. I mean, we talk about <laughs> shift left security. Everything's always going that way. Developers have their hand in everything. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly, Jerome, right, do you have any thoughts uh, on that? Reaction, you can just, yeah. okay, say what you want. So, I spoke with one of our customers yesterday, and they say that they, in the last eight years, we developed tons of code for just to operate their infrastructure. That if developers, so, five or six years ago when they, a developer wanted a VM, it will take him a week to, to, to get a VM because he needs all the approval and someone needs to actually provision this VM on, on VMware. And today they automate all the way, end to end. And, and, and it takes two, two minutes to get a VM for, for developer. So operators are becoming developers, as you said, and, and they develop code and they help and they make the, the infrastructure as code and infrastructure as, as an operator to make it more easy for, for the business to run, right? Make and, it and then also if you add in data ops, AI yeah. ops, data ops, security ops, that's the new IT. It seems to be the new IT is the stuff that's scaling. A lot of data is coming yeah. in, you got security, so all that's got to be brought in. How do you guys view that into the equation? Oh, I mean, you, you become big generalists. I think there's a reason why those cloud security prof or cloud professional certificates are becoming so popular. Uh, you have to know a, a lot about all the different applications, yeah. be able to code it, automate it, like you said. Uh, hopefully everything as code, and then it also makes it easy for security tools to come in and look and examine where the vulnerabilities are when those things are as code. So, yeah. because you're going and, and developing all this automation, you do become, let's say, a generalist. Process. You know, we've been hearing on theCUBE here, and we've been hearing in the industry, burnout associated with security professionals mm -hmm. and some data 
ops because the tsunami of data, tsunami of breaches, a lot of engineering get, engineers getting called in the middle of the night. Yep. So that's not automated. So what this has got to get solved quickly, it's scaled up quickly. Yes, uh, that's a two-part question there. I think in terms of the burnout aspect, you better send some love to your security team because they only get called when things get broken and when they're doing a great job, you never hear about them. So I think that's one of the things. It's a thankless profession. Uh, from the second part, if you have the right tools in place so that when something does hit the fan and does break, then you can make a, an automated or a specific decision upstream yep. to change that, then things become easy. It's when the tools aren't in place and you have disparate environments so that when a log for shell or something like that comes in, you're scrambling trying to figure out what clusters are where and where you're impacted. Point of attack, remediate, fast. That seems to be the new move. Yeah, the, yeah. And, and you do need to know exactly what's going on in your clusters and how to remediate it quickly, how to get the most impact with one change. And that makes sense, the surface area is expanding, yeah. more things are being pushed, so things yeah. will, whether it's a zero day vulnerability or just you know, an attack. Just a mix, yeah. Yeah, you know that you automate, with customer automate a lot of things, but it's good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. Some customer told us they, they, they um, I think Spotify lost uh, the whole uh, uh, full zone in because of one mistake of, <laughs> of a customer because they automate everything and he make one it mistake. Scaled the failure. Really exactly. Fast. It scaled the failure <laughs> very fast. That was actually a KubeCon talk I think yeah. uh, four years ago. They yeah. talked about it. It was a yeah. great learning experience. Yeah. But yeah. It worked so, double-edged sword there. Yeah. yeah. So definitely we need to a lot. Again, scale the automation, test the automation, way to, yeah. you need to hold the drills around it. And yeah, you have to know the impact. There's a lot of talk in the security space about what you can and can't yeah. automate. And by default, when you install ACS, yeah. everything is not enforced. You have to, you have to have an admission control. How are you guys seeing your customers? Obviously Red Hat's got a great customer base. How are they adopting to the managed service wave that's coming? People are liking the managed services now because they might not have skills gap issues. So managed services is becoming a big part of the portfolio, what's, the, what's your guys take on the managed it's, services piece? It's just time to value. You're developing a new application, you need to get it out there quick. If somebody, your competitor gets out there a month before you do, you know, that's a huge market you advantage. You care how you got there. Right. <laughs> exactly, and so, <laughs> you know, we've, we've had so much Kubernetes expertise over the last you know, 10 yeah. or so, 10 plus year, or well, Kubernetes for seven plus years at Red Hat, that why wouldn't you leverage that, that knowledge internally so you can get your, um, right. your application yeah. Why change quicker. your tool chain and your workflows go yeah. faster and take advantage of the managed service the advantage, yeah. because it's just about getting from point A to point B. Exactly. Okay, well, and time to value think. is, you mentioned that, it's not a trivial term, it's not a, it's not a marketing term, there's a lot of impact that can be made mm -hmm. for organizations that can move faster, that can iterate faster, develop what their customers are looking for so that they have that competitive advantage. Yep. It's definitely not something that's trivial. Yeah, and working in marketing, whenever you get that new feature out and I can go and chat about it so online, it's, it's always awesome. We always get customers <laughs> uh, interested, so. Pushing new code, being secure. Yeah. What's next for you guys? What's, what's, what's on the agenda? What's around the corner? We'll see a lot of Red Hat at reInvent. Mm -hmm. Obviously, your relationship mm -hmm. with AWS is strong as a company. Yeah. Uh, Multi-cloud is here, super cloud, as we've been saying. Uh, super cloud's a thing. Uh, what's next for you guys? So we want to we launch the the cloud services, and we the, the idea that we will get feedback from customers. We are not going GA. We're not going. We're not going to sell it for now. We want to get customers. We want to get feedback to make the product as a as a best that we can sell and we and best we can give for our customers and get feedback. And uh, when we go GA and when we start selling this product, we will get the best product in the market. Mm -hmm. So this is our goal. We want to get the, the uh, loop, with, uh, the customer in the loop, and get as much as feedback as we can. And and also we work in very close with other customers, with our existing customers, yeah. uh, to enhance the product to add more and more features. But the customer needs. It's all about, you know, uh, supply chain. I don't want, I don't want like it, but we have to say it. It's all about making things more automated um, and uh, make things more, more easy for our customer to use, to have security in the Kubernetes environment. So where can your customers go? Clearly you've made a big impact on our viewers with your conversation today. Where are they going to be able to go to get their hands on the release? So we have, a, we have just, you can find it on, online. We have a we have a, a website to sign up for this uh, for this program. Mm -hmm. It's on my blog. We have a blog out there for uh, for for uh, ACS 
cloud services. You can ju ju just go there, go there, sign up, and uh, we will contact the customer. Uh, yeah, and there's another way, if you, if you ever want to get your hands on it, and you can do it for free, open source Stack Rocks. The product is open source completely, uh, and yeah. I would love feedback in Slack channel. Um, it's one of the, we also get a ton of feedback from people who aren't actually paying customers, mm -hmm. and they contribute upstream, so that's an awesome way to get started. Yeah. But like you said, you go to, uh, if you search ACS Cloud Service, then Service Preview. Don't have to be a Red Hat customer. Yeah. Just, you're running a CNCF compliant Kubernetes version, we'd love to hear all from you. All open source, all Got out it. in the open. Yep. Right, right getting it. To available to the customers, the non-customers, the, the hopefully pending customers. Guys, thank you so much for joining John and me talking about the new release, the thank evolution you. of Stack Rocks in the last years of 18 months. A lot of good stuff here. I think you've done a great job of getting the audience excited about what you're releasing. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for our guests and for John Furrier, Lisa Martin here in Detroit, KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, North America, coming to you live. We'll be back with our next guest in just a minute. <laughs>